Okay. So, I heard that you guys have really been working on all kinds of texts. Y'all have been doing a lot of work on nonfiction texts. I think you really need to get comprehension on that. And today we're going to kind of try to dive in even to nonfiction. And we're going to talk about, I know it's we're going to talk about how to really use those text features to pull out the key points that the author's making. Sometimes it seems like they just kind of put text features in there kind of just for fluff. We want to see to figure out about those text features. Like, what are key points? What's the most important thing the author's trying to tell me by doing that? And then we're going to practice asking ourselves questions while we're thinking and reading. Because do y'all ever have that happen where you just start reading and go and this? Your brain is totally actively engaged in what you're doing. We're going to practice asking ourselves questions while we're doing it. Keep our brain really active in while we're doing it. So we can think about why those text features are important. So I'm going to give you one last question. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk about it. Okay. So we all know, y'all see in nonfiction texts, they have different text features, table of contents, headings, titles, pictures, captions, things. Text features are any of that other extra stuff other than just the normal written words, paragraphs that are in there, the extra components. And we all know we have to read everything on the page. Sometimes I gotta see the real. I catch myself sometimes just kind of glancing over some of the text features and just like thinking about them like they're fluff. Not really reading them, even though like I can't really read that picture. But you know what? I can. I can really look at that picture to let it increase my understanding and really help me comprehend what I'm reading instead so of just kind of skimming over it like fluff. So that's what I'm going to work about on today. Um, and I have to ask myself, like, why? They didn't just put it there to fill space. They put it there because it's important for a reason. So while I'm reading it, I'm going to ask myself, like, why is this important? Why is this important? Why did the author put it there to help me with that? So one, let me show you all a little visual I have that's going to help me with this. I have a little stop sign, okay? And whenever I see, this says visual, but kind of whenever I see any text feature, okay, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to think, okay, what information am I learning? What am I learning about here? And then why is this important? Why specifically did they put that text feature here? So that's I should have brought a pencil out or something so everyone can kind of see that. So what information am I learning? And why is it important? So I'm going to give you all a book. You right now I need you all to be good fifth graders and think about you know, sure you have. what's your best learning style. I'm going to model first. If your best learning style is just to listen to me and not even look at the book, that's okay. You can shut the book and just listen to me. If your best learning style is to follow along while I'm reading, you can follow along while I'm reading too. So you just make your fifth grade, you're old enough to make that decision of how you're going to think and how you're going to learn best, okay? So, got a safari magazine here, a little article, and it's Eco Antarctica, okay? And I can see right away there's a lot of text features here. But, you know, I told y'all sometimes my brain gets tempted just to kind of skip over them. I'm not going to let myself do that, okay? I'm going to ask myself those text questions. So, first one is Pico Antarctica. You can read along with me, but you need to be listening to my thinking too. So if it's going to distract you to read, don't read, but if you're going to be able to still listen to me, you can read that so. Pico Antarctica. Antarctica is a huge frozen continent around the South Pole. It is at the southernmost end of the world. Antarctica is the coldest, iciest, windiest place on Earth. Temperatures rarely rise above freezing point. Many species often reach up to 199 miles per hour, that's 320 kilometers per hour. An exposed person outside can freeze solid in minutes. Oh my. Exposed? You know what? That was awesome. He didn't know a word, and instead of just, you ever do that, you don't know a word, and you just skip over it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so an exposed person outside with a free solid in minutes. So I'm thinking about what I know. I'm actually going to do some text features here. I'm seeing they have it outside. It's very cold. Okay, talk to me about how cold it is. I can tell that the 
author chose, going back to those questions, what am I learning and why is this information important? They're showing me these pictures here to show how cold it is. So that's making me think an exposed person could freeze solid in minutes. Oh my God, freeze solid huh? sitting inside in the heater, right? So exposed, I'm thinking from this means they're outside without protection from the weather. Okay, yeah. You know what, and it might even be colder there, not there, that probably even with a jacket or coat, you could freeze a little bit longer than if you didn't have it. Well, but it's funny if you just like sit outside. Mm -hmm. So on this first page, I'm gonna use a few sentence stems to just really make sure I'm getting them deeply. So I learned blank from this text feature. Looking at this first page, it really just reiterated to me that it's cold, okay? And that the author chose to put this text feature on this page to really stress to me. Ice furnace is not a whole lot there. It's cold. I'm going to keep reading the next page a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure I'm thinking what am I learning and why is this information important. 98% of the Antarctic is covered with a thick ice sheet. This is called an ice cap. The ice cap is about 7,217 feet or 2,200 feet meters thick. It is formed from layers of ice and snow being pressed together over millions of years. So ice pack is about seven, oh, I just went straight into the full text of the chip. So I'm going to actually pause a minute. Okay. So what information am I learning? It is telling me about the ice packs, and I want to make sure I understand that. Am I understanding it? If I'm asking myself what's an ice pack, I might need to reread that again. So I'm going to go back, okay? 98%, so I'm using my math brain, that's a lot, 98% is most, okay? almost 100%. 98% of Antarctic is covered with a thick sheet of ice. This is called an ice cap. So that thick sheet of ice that covers like most of the continent, okay? But then, why is this text feature important? We see like this um, like caption here. The ice cap is about 7,217 feet thick. So I'm asking myself, what am I learning? I'm learning right now about the ice cap that's on Antarctica. And why is this information important? It just told me in the paragraph that it's that thick. But the author chose to put that in its own big box. It's telling me that's really thick and that that's really an important thing about Antarctica. I wonder, maybe there's ice caps other places in the world, I don't know. But by them emphasizing that, I'm thinking even if there are ice caps other places, this is probably thicker than most other places, more here than other places. The two other, the other two percent of the land is rocky and, and free of ice. The ice-free areas are found on the coastline. They're also found on nearby sub-Antarctic islands. These ice-free areas are where most ant life as well as bird and seal colonies are found. So now it's telling me there's a lot of ice caps and then there's another part of the land, not very much, but it's ice free, it's rocky. And I look at my pictures, I see this first picture up here. It looks like just huge, almost like mountains of ice. And it says the, a gap in the big Antarctic ice cap. So it's stressing to me like that looks like that would be taller than this building, huge, tall, thick sheets of ice. I've never seen that much ice. And then down here, I look, it almost looks like a desert. It almost looks kind of sandy. It doesn't even look to me like it's at the same place. And it says, a pond in the middle of an Antarctic valley. So I think this must be that ice-free zone where it's more... The 2%, right, good mental math there, okay? So again, what am I learning? Thinking about that, well, I think they're telling me about the land in Antarctica. And why is this information important? Well, you know what? I kind of think they did, they didn't do two pictures of ice. I think they're kind of almost telling me the main idea of this page, that there's two different kinds of land in Antarctica, and these are the two kinds of land. Did y'all see how instead of just skimming over that, I really thought deeply about why on earth that author put those pictures there, okay? so. These, this text feature added to my thinking, but it really made it clear to me, sometimes it's hard to tell them, they, like that many feet, it is made clear to me, really, really thick eyes, and then it made it clear to me there's another type of land, only 
person, but where it's more rocky and no ice. Why don't think it's warm? Is over here it's warm? Like Maybe. A little, probably a little bit warm. Maybe. It's like that's not frozen. You're right. I wonder why that pond isn't frozen. So now, guys, it's your turn. Y'all saw how I did this. Y'all are going to read the next page, just this part here where it says cold desert. You could use my anchor chart to ask yourself questions. And here's some questions here, some of them that I was using. To ask yourself questions while you're reading. And at the end, I want you guys to be able to tell me, what is this cold desert page mostly about? What is the big main ideas that are on this page? And I'm going to want you to be able to tell me why these text features are there, why the author did that, okay? So start reading. Do we have to fill this out? Nope, it's just if you are wondering like how to think about that page, their question stems to how to think. Okay. Jackie just had some great learning for us, okay? So, what information am I learning? This is kind of crazy. What do we usually think of when we think of a desert? Hot. 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 That's what we think of as hot, yeah? But, we know this is not hot because they said we could freeze through in just a few minutes, okay? So, but Jackie, you really read this. You know, there's even a text feature. That, what text feature did they get to really emphasize this? What about it? Everyone's pointing the to it. The text box. The text box. Great. Mm -hmm. And return to your partner. It also kind of shows a picture of that. Like, you need it. Sand and you look a lot like it. Uh huh. The snow looks a little like sand in it, doesn't it? Turn to your partner. The text box. Oh, yeah. You too, you too, you too. What does the text box tell us? How do we know it's like a desert? There's some. And why did the author choose to put a text box there? Now, so 
does the author put in this here? Because is this a main idea to him, a pretty important idea? Or just like kind of not as Okay, now sometimes that, that brings up a great point. Sometimes authors put fun facts that are not the main idea. And sometimes fun facts are like, you know, eight kinds of animals live here, whatever it is. It's not the main idea, but it does seem like this one is the main idea. So let's look. There's actually several hints on this page that makes us think it's the main idea. So there's that one text box. What else? What is some other evidence that this is a main idea? It kind of even states it somewhere else in another text page. Okay. 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 Little strong ways it brings that up about deserts again. What else? There's another text feature at the very top of that page. The heading tells us it's a cold desert, right? The heading tells us that. So kind of in at least three ways the author is telling us desert. So we're thinking this is probably more than just the fun fact. There's in 30 different places. Oh, yeah. Your mom's and dad ever for this, like, nagging y'all. Like, in your room? In your room? Oh, yeah. Didn't I just tell you? No. Your mom and dad would keep something she was in the room. What do you guys know? You know they need it. So kind of the same thing with an author. They're seeing something several times ago. Thank you. 